Hello, I'm shooting this video for potential students of S283 Planetary Science and the Search for Life. That's the Open University's Level 2 course in Planetary Science. Uh, it's just as good for physics and astronomy students as it is for geology students. In fact, in this day and age, you shouldn't really be studying geology without looking at other planets as well. It's only 30 credits. So depending what route through a degree you're searching, you've got to find another 30 credits to go with it to make up 120 uh, for level two. But it's a popular course. Our students seem uh, pretty satisfied. Uh, I'm going to show you some stuff about it. So let's switch this to shooting in the other direction. OK, here's the, uh, the module website on screen. Everything you need you can find on screen if you go down to assessment resources or study or study text is a place to go the uh, texts are there also the learning outcomes well worth looking at but every chapter of every book is available as pdf on the screen uh, and of course this is where you will find your uh, tmas as well there are four tmas uh, each year uh, this is the website for the year that's just finished. It started in October, November 2015, but here's here's TMA1. They're, they're, they're formative TMAs in that uh, the score that you get is just your passport to go uh, forward to the exam. Uh, it doesn't count to your final grade, provided it gets you, provided you've just got yourself into the exam. So use the course website. There's a lot of chat going on in the forums. The course is based on books, Introduction to the Solar System, which does what it says on the tin. It introduces you to the solar system. Then book two, the second half of the course, is an introduction to astrobiology. Uh, so there's some uh, biological stuff. We talk about issues of habitability on planets. We then have a chapter about Mars. We have a chapter about uh, icy moons. Europa, uh, in particular, may well have a a global ocean under its icy carapace and that is probably the most likely place to be inhabited by life outside of the earth anywhere in the solar system more likely than mars in my book uh, we then go on to look at, at titan where the ou was instrumental in providing instruments to land on the surface with the cassini huygens lander and um, we then go on to look at exoplanets those are planets around other stars how you detect them, how you measure them, how we might find out if they're inhabited. And then there's the search for extraterrestrial intelligence uh, SETI. So um, that's the course. We'll be working, in fact, during uh, 2017 on new editions for these books, but they won't be ready for students until uh, 2018. So you're getting uh, books which first came out in 2011. So they're up to fairly up to date anyway, um, and they should guide you through the course very nicely. You don't need any introductory reading before you start the course. Uh, if you want to do something, I wrote a very short introduction to planets, Oxford University Press, and more recently a very short introduction to moons. They're seven ninety nine in the shops or cheap from online outlets. Uh, but you don't need these. The course stands on its own. A little bit more about me. I'm working on the European Space Agency's mission to Mercury. That's why I wrote this book, which I don't recommend you buy. It's expensive and far more detailed than you need. Here's the planet Mercury. It's not a moon. That, in fact, is Mercury. And I have PhD students working on remapping that planet on the basis of the new data that we now have. Here, in fact, is a PhD student working on mapping Mercury. I'm shooting this to my S283 students, Jack. Say okay. hello. Hello. What are you doing, Jack? Your um, PhD, what is it? I'm making a geological map of the planet Mercury. How are you doing that? How am I doing that? Well, I'm just loading up the software now. And um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at uh, images of the surface of the planet. And I'm uh, looking for different units. So on Mercury, there are a few. There are smooth planes and intercrater planes. So intercrater planes is very old and has lots of cratering on it that's accumulated over the age of mercury and smooth planes is a volcanic unit that resurfaced part of the planet so it um, has fewer craters on it because it's younger thanks and here on the wall are maps we've just received from colleagues of ours who are mapping adjacent 
areas on the planet Mercury. It's a good planet to work on, isn't it? Oh, it's the best. You have to say that. <laughs> so I'm in the foyer now of the uh, Robert Hooke building where many of my planetary science colleagues work with a display in the foyer here. Here's uh, Phil Ivert landed on 67P, the comet that Rosetta went to. That's a model who made of a comet before we realised what shape it really was. Let's go upstairs and see if I can find one of my colleagues, uh, Mahesh Anand. Now, this is where a very valuable member of the module team sits. This is Mahesh Anand. Hi, Hi Mahesh. Please tell the S283 or prospective S283 students what you do. Well, I am an academic uh, who does teaching and some research, uh, particularly for S283. I teach from this book called Introduction to the Solar System. In particular, I teach chapter nine uh, that talks about meteorites and uh, material in the solar system uh, that we analyze in our laboratory. Um, and uh, we also have book two that talks about Mars and Martian meteorites that uh, again, uh, I teach some of it. So you're a meteorite expert and in fact a lunar expert, aren't you? Tell us about your research. Right, so my actual research actually is on lunar samples and some of the lunar samples that were brought back by Apollo astronauts. Um, I am interested in finding out um, how much water there is on the moon, where that came from, and ultimately where the water in the Earth moon system originated. Where did it originate? Spill the beans. <laughs> <laughs> that's a million dollar question, Dave. So that's what we are <laughs> still researching, but we think that we have got uh, some pretty good idea as to the major contributor to the water in the Earth moon system were probably uh, meteorites like uh, those we know. Uh, 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 carbonaceous chondrites. And they'll make carbonaceous chondrites in this very book, won't they? In this book, yes. Okay. Thanks, Mesh. You're welcome. I've now come to the Department of Environment, Earth and Ecosystems. And uh, in here, I hope we'll find a number of my colleagues from the S283 module team. scientist. Is Suzanne here? Yes! Would you care to say hello to the S283 students? This is live. I've interrupted a conversation. <laughs> well, I am <laughs> coming to do the um, exams today, although I'm in the middle of a move. I'm moving house today and juggling the exams just for you, but we are getting it done. The reason I'm shooting this today is that today's the day we get the whole module team together to do what we call standardization. The exams have been marked uh, many of the scripts have been checked, that's what's in these envelopes, can't show you those. And we're meeting today to look at the statistics and the quality of the marking to work out if anything needs to be done to rebalance the marks given to the questions or anything like that. Waiting with me for the rest of the module team is Jenny Bellamy, who's the, these days we call you the curriculum manager, don't we? You do, yes. What would you like to say to people who might like to start studying S283 next year? S283 is brilliant. I've been with the module right from the start and I love it. It's great. It's really interesting. Uh, it's very diverse. It includes things from all different areas of, sub of science and it's, yeah, it's a lovely module. And if you need another 30 credits to go with it, uh, what is there available? If, um, if you're interested in biology, then the biology of survival is great. That's S295. That includes um, quite a bit of ecology, mainly whole organism biology. That's a good one to go with it. That's 30 credits. Um, what else? S282, obviously, which is astronomy, if you're more inclined to that sort of thing. It's the day of the exam award meeting now, and I've tracked down Manish Patel. Manish, um, we've got a very appropriate picture behind you there. Tell us who you are and what you do on the course team. Module team, I mustn't say course. <laughs> My name is Manish, uh, Dr. Manish Patel. I'm a senior lecturer here at the Open University in the Department of Physical Sciences. And I work on um, missions to Mars and other planets. So at the moment, I'm working on the ExoMars mission to Mars, which you can see behind me, that's the ExoMars orbiter there and the Schiaparelli lander, which is going to land on Mars in October. 
this year, so keep an eye out for that. And you're involved in the Trace Gas Orbiter, so yes. it's an instrument on the orbiter, not the lander, is that right? Yeah, so I have, I'm involved in the orbiter and the lander, We, but I have an instrument involvement on the, on the orbiter, so we have an instrument called Nomad, which is going to fly around the planet and look for methane, and signs of life on Mars, fingers crossed, over the next few years. And then on the lander, we have a science involvement on the, on the uh, instruments that are involved there, so a surface meteorology package. Measuring the weather on Mars, so hopefully you'll get a weather report from from this uh, mid mid October this year. So keep your eyes open for that one. And how does this relate to the kind of things students would be learning about in S two eight three? There's a whole lot of things here that, that cross over into S two eight three. So you have the astrobiology angle, so the, the search for signs of life, uh, gases like methane in the atmosphere. Should it be there? Is it a sign that there is or was life on Mars? And then the lander is going to tell us a lot about the atmosphere. So the atmospheres of terrestrial planets. We'll find out a lot about Mars's atmospheric structure as this probe goes through the atmosphere to land on the surface and we'll work out the different layers of the atmosphere, as you would have learned about in 283. And also uh, the kind of weather that you get at the surface. And in this coming year, you'll be posting news on the module website to keep students in touch. I shall indeed. I yeah. welcome any questions that you have, uh, and I'll answer them as, as, as well as I can. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have some. We have a direct link to some Mars data here through through the school. Right. Thanks, Manish. And also here because we're about to sort out the exams is is Suzanne Spencer. Hello, Dave. Who also has Mars involvement. So Suzanne, tell yes. the prospective students about what you do. I actually, I'm already through this most nerve-wracking phase of any space mission, which is the landing. My colleague Manish just mentioned that they are going to land in 2016. I'm working on the Curiosity rover, which landed in 2012, and we are driving around on Mars for three years, have learned a lot about water and potential habitability of Mars. And I am also looking at impact craters on Mars. Okay, and what's your involvement on S283? On S283, I am mainly looking at exams, for example. Today, I am looking at uh, questions, TMAs, activities, and I will, of course, be also available to look into uh, the forums and see uh, what I can report from Curiosity, the rover on Mars. Well, I've learned we're going to be having a new course manager for the next presentation of S283, so uh, let's go and find her. There she is. Hi. Good morning. So, Caroline, you're the new course manager. I ah, am curriculum the assistant. Curriculum, curriculum manager. manager. Curriculum manager for S283. Planetary sciences and the search for life. And you've been with us before. I have. Good to have had you some, back. Had it for one year before, a few years ago. ago. And now uh, your background, you did a PhD in, was it meteorites? I didn't finish it, but oh. I was working on um, Martian meteorites. Yeah. Dave. So I did spend seven years in planetary science, but my background was earth science before that. Okay, and your message to the students? Um, sign up for it, it's a great course, and I hope that you really enjoy it. It's got some fantastic books and such exciting um, frontline science going on. Um, so I think it's, it's a great one to take. Okay, thanks Caroline. <laughs>